Freedom might be the most patriotic name imaginable for a space station, and it's what we're talking about today on Vintage Space. Like I said in my previous video about space station concepts that never came to be, NASA wanted to build a space station as early as 1959. Before the Soviet Union beat the United States to putting a man into orbit with Yuri Gagarin's flight in April of 1961, NASA was considering a space station as the logical next step from the Mercury program. The idea was to build an orbital platform from which missions to the moon and eventually Mars could launch. But of course, having been beaten into orbit by the Soviet Union, it was President Kennedy who decided that the moon was a better short-term show of technological dominance than a space station. There were other factors that influenced the decision, of course, but in short, NASA ended up focusing on the lunar landing program and the space station idea took a back seat. The idea of a space station was again brought up in the late 1960s when NASA was facing the end of the Apollo program. But rather than build a costly new station, the space agency immediately took old Apollo hardware and built Skylab. But in the background, as Skylab developed, there was still the idea of building a larger and far more capable space station. But NASA knew that it couldn't necessarily do it with the rockets and technologies that it had available. Studying a concept called Space Base, NASA realized that the cost of launching and building a space station using expendable rockets, like the Saturn family that had launched Apollo to the moon, would exceed the cost of the space station. What the agency needed was a reusable vehicle, something to shuttle supplies and astronauts to orbit. This became the Space Transportation System, or what we colloquially know as the Space Shuttle. But the space station was really expensive, and so NASA was actually given the go to build the space shuttle before it had the space station that the shuttle was designed to service. The space station dream finally started to take shape in the early 1980s. In his State of the Union address on January 25th of 1984, President Reagan called for NASA to collaborate with international partners to build a space station within a decade. This was the presidential support and congressional backing that NASA so badly needed, and so it was finally able to establish a space station program office. In the fall of 1984, requests for proposals were sent out to industry leaders hoping to build pieces of the space station. Two years later, in 1986, both Japan and Europe had signed on to the program, agreeing to supply modules for the space station. And Canada had signed on as well, agreeing to build a manipulator arm. The station was emerging from these early design stages as a dual keel arrangement with a central truss that was designed to hold the main living and working quarters as well as solar arrays for power but there was a setback to offset any step forward. NASA had originally projected that the space station would cost about $8 billion for one central living module as well as two laboratory modules, but this proved unrealistically low. The Challenger disaster in 1986 also took its toll on the space station. Safety became an issue, and now there was a need to give astronauts on board a space station a quick escape route to bring them home safely in the event of an emergency. This forced design changes that increased the station's weight and cost. In 1987, the dual keel design was replaced by a single truss structure, and in 1988, Reagan gave it a name. He called it Space Station Freedom. In July of 1989, Freedom got a boost it desperately needed. Just six months after taking office, President Bush gave a speech commemorating the 20th anniversary of Apollo 11's lunar landing. In the speech, he called for the United States to return men to the moon within a decade and eventually send men to Mars within 30 years. And he endorsed Space Station Freedom as the cornerstone of this long-range effort. The plan was effectively a three-phase one. Immediately in the future, then in the 1990s, space station freedom would be NASA's primary focus. The decade after, in the early 21st century, men would go back to the moon. The decade after that, in the 2010s, men would go onward to Mars. Freedom wouldn't just be the orbital laboratory that NASA would need to test the technologies designed to support these long-duration human exploration missions. It would be an orbital waypoint for crews going to the moon and Mars. The 1990s dawned, and though there was hardware for space station freedom being built, the program cost kept increasing. From the original price of $8 billion, the cost had soared to more than $38 billion. It was just too much, and President Clinton called for NASA to revisit the space station idea and try to find new ways to cut costs. The agency was forced to redesign Space Station Freedom and came up with three different proposals that would come with a lower price tag. One of the proposals, called Alpha, used 75% of the hardware from Space Station Freedom, but also a fair bit of material from the Russian Mir-2 space station that was never flown. 
Alpha was eventually selected by the White House, and as the program developed, it took on a new name, the International Space Station. I hope this gave you guys a good overview as to what Space Station Freedom was all about, and just a little bit about its history, because it is actually a pretty interesting program, and there's a lot to say about it, especially the missions to the Moon and Mars that it was designed to support. Those are two things that I will be looking at in future episodes, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Do you guys have questions about Space Stations, or specifically Space Station Freedom, since that's what I'm thinking about these days? Leave them in the comments below, and of course, your ideas for future episodes, anything that you'd like to know more about. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as AST Vintage Space for Vintage Space content every day of the week. And with two episodes going up right here most weeks, sometimes I miss a day here or there if I'm traveling, sorry guys, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode.